Good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name's Ross, and as always told, out of voice of radio. So today, we're going to do something that we haven't done for quite a while. We are going to count down the most annoying cards in the Pokemon trading card game. And a massive shout out to some of my lovely Pokemon friends over on the Patreon. Patreon.com slash PTCG Radio. Specifically, Legally Sarcastic and the lovely Landon Dastra. Although Legally Sarcastic, also very lovely fellow. Because we have a Discord server for the Patreon. And we've been having a chat on there and I posted my list in there and... I was told a whole bunch of things, and we had a chat, and we sorted it out, and I changed my list quite a lot. Shout out also to Scott, and to Sean, and to Noah, and to anyone else that I forgot, Andrew Taylor as well. Cheers, guys. So, let's go through a couple of honourable mentions. We're looking at Pokemon cards that just make you go... <sighs> So Mimikyu, now I originally put this on my list, the lovely Patreon folks convinced me not to. Mimikyu's one of these which is very format dependent. You see Mimikyu turns off the abilities of any EX or GX Pokemon that have any damage counters on. That's very annoying. The thing is, as Pokemon V get more prevalent, Pokemon GX become less prevalent. Then, of course, you've got all the Pokemon like the Dene who have coming into play abilities, so they're always going to be working. Yes, this is a phenomenal thing against something like Mew to a Mew, where you damage them, they lose their ability and all of their attacks, other than the not great GX attack. Good card, not quite good enough for the list. Similarly, Pokemon Catcher, it's Coin Flip. And it's gusting. Flip a coin, if heads, drag one of your opponent's Pokemon into the active. It's a very annoying card, because if you're playing it and you flip tails, nothing happens. If you're playing against it and your opponent flip heads, they get free gusting. But the fact of the matter is, we've got stuff like Custom Catcher, and we've got Great Catcher, and we are soon going to have Boss's Orders Giovanni, which is just a reprint of Lysander. And actually, as annoying as a card as it is, especially being lucky and getting the coin flip, it might not be relevant enough at the moment. Still a very good card, still seeing play. Latios GX is a very annoying card. It's got an attack that, well, it's actually got two things. Firstly, it's got an attack that turns off GX attacks, but it is itself a GX attack. And secondly, it's got an attack that makes it immune to tag team Pokemon next turn. And with stuff like Mewtwo and Mew and Reshiram and Charizard and Arceus and Dialga and Palkia, we are in a very tag team heavy format at the moment. But the reality is, it's still... We are heading away from tag teams, and it's not seen that much play. And as much as I wanted to put it on the list, and I do think it is worth putting on the list... I don't have enough spaces to put it on the list. And finally, Naganadal. A card that looked like it was going to start taking over the format, and then just didn't. It's got the GX attack Stinger, which can be used for just a triple acceleration energy, and then you both get down to three prizes. Your opponent's got one prize left to take, you've got six. You use Stinger, there's now three prizes left to take each. Except you then also need to remember that your opponent has probably used a lot more resources taking their five prizes than you've used taking your no prizes. Yeah, that can be annoying. But none of them made the list. In at number 10, we've got Chaotic Swell. Chaotic Swell is the ultimate counter stadium. It doesn't do anything. But if your opponent tries to play a stadium, then Chaotic Swell will discard it as it replaces Chaotic Swell. So generally speaking, you can play one stadium per turn as long as it's different from the current stadium. And it will replace the current stadium. But what this does is as it's being replaced, it gets rid of the incoming stadium. Yeah. That's kind of annoying. And you can use this to basically get rid of two of your opponent's stadiums. You play it to get rid of a stadium, and then when your opponent plays another stadium, it gets rid of that as well. Sounds pretty annoying to me. 
In at number nine, energy removal card. We're talking Pokemon Catcher, the item that removes any energy on a coin flip. We're talking Faber, that takes away any special energy and puts it in the lost zone, though it is a supporter. And we're talking Team Yell Grunt, which, well, it just gets an energy from your opponent's Pokemon and puts it back into their hand. And all of these cards combine to do the same thing. Get rid of your opponent's energy. Sure, there are decks like Frostmoth and Welder that can attach a bunch of extra energy. Malamar would be another one. That don't mind so much. But any deck that is manually attaching and attaching, you know, one per turn really is going to struggle against energy denial. And all of a sudden, you've got this really good strategy that you've been working up to for a while. And now it's gone because your opponent played an energy removal card. Not saying it's necessarily unfair, but I am very much saying that it is annoying. Coming in at number eight, we've got Obstagoon. Now, Obstagoon is one of these new ones that came around in Sword and Shield. And it's kind of annoying because when you play it, you get to drop free damage counters on one of your opponent's Pokemon. That's dropping extra damage without even having to attack. And don't forget that the Galarian Zigzagoon from which it evolves drops one damage counter when it comes into play. But the most annoying thing about this is that it's got an attack that just shuts down basic Pokemon. Two energy, 90 damage obstruct. During your opponent's next turn, prevent all damage done to this Pokemon by attacks from basic Pokemon. Oh. Yeah, it just completely shuts down basic Pokemon. Which means if you're playing a Zacian ADP deck with no evolutions, that's essentially it. If you're playing a Mewtwo deck with no evolutions, that's basically it. Reshiram and Charizard deck, no evolutions, that's basically it. Uh, Pikachu and Zekrom decks, these lightning decks tend not to play any evolutions. Yeah. You can brick, you can knock set up, you can lose to gusting or energy denial. It is an attack at the end of the day, so you've got to use obstruct every turn. But the fact of the matter is that this can just completely shut down your opponent's Pokemon. That's a very bad thing. Coming in at number seven, we've got Giratina. I despise Giratina, quite frankly, ladies and gentlemen. I absolutely despise it. You see, what makes Giratina so annoying isn't the attack that for free energy does 130 and then puts four damage counters on one of your own Pokemon. It's a decent attack, but it's not particularly impressive. What makes Giratina annoying is the ability Distortion Door. If it's in your discard pile, you can put it straight onto the bench. Oh yeah, and at the same time, you get to drop two damage counters, one on each of two of your opponent's benched Pokemon. Oh. It's more damage without attacking, but also it means that it's almost impossible to actually get rid of. Imagine you're playing against it in a Malamar deck, and most of the time you will be playing against it in a Malamar deck. Malamar accelerates energy from the discard to your bench Pokemon. So if your opponent's got two Malamar out, you knock out Giratina. It comes onto the bench, drops two damage. Malamar gets two energy on. Attach from hand, you're off again. And they've always got a Pokemon. When you're facing down Pokemon, a lot of the time what you're trying to do is run your opponent out of resources. String together two or three KOs in a row so that your opponent isn't able to keep attacking. Giratina and Malamar basically stop that being a possibility, and that's really, really annoying. Coming in at number six, we've got Lily's Pokedoll. What's really annoying about Lily's Pokedoll is it is a Pokemon. It's an item card, but it can be a Pokemon, and it doesn't give up a prize. No prize is given up when Lily's Pokedoll gets KO'd. Your opponent just gets to carry on. That's annoying. Now add into the fact that it's actually better than its predecessor RoboSub. Because RoboSub, at least if you wanted to get it out the active when it wasn't KO'd, you had to discard it. So it didn't come back. This goes on the bottom of your deck ready to come out and use again. We've seen things like Florges 
actually suddenly become genuinely viable and good because it can recover these every turn so that you are constantly able to just have a robo sub in the active there are games going on right now where people are knocking out 20 pokemon and not taking six prizes that is kind of annoying point of this video in at number five we've got chip chip ice axe now chip chip ice axe is somewhat unique in that it is an item card that lets you rearrange your opponent's deck you get to look at the top three cards of your opponent's deck and your opponent shuffles two of them into their deck but the one that you choose stays on top it is a weaker version of hiker hiker's the same thing but with the top five cards but hiker is your supporter for the turn and chip chip ice axe alone isn't great but it is the combos that it finishes and it's a combo finisher that's ridiculous play a reset stamp to put your opponent down to just a one card hand and then maybe even use something like jesse and james or even a two card hand and then use jesse and james and then your opponent's got a zero card hand and then you use Chip Chip Ice Axe to make sure they draw garbage. Guard of War and Sylveon has gone away for a while because it's got weakness to Zassi and the best card in the format. But that GX attack makes your opponent shuffle their entire hand into their deck. At which point it was the goal of every Guard of War and Sylveon player, and they were generally using Green's Exploration to make sure it happened, to get a Chip Chip Ice Axe and rearrange the top of your opponent's deck so they got nothing. We've seen something like this on Orbeetle as well, but then again, Orbeetle is a stage 2 Pokemon. It's good, but it's not ideal. No, ladies and gentlemen, this is, for an item card, ridiculous. In at number 4, Belelba and Bryson Man. You see, Belelba and Bryson Man is a card that makes both players discard the top 3 cards of their deck. Now you also have the opportunity to discard three cards from your hand, and then both players discard their bench Pokemon until they've only got three remaining. So if both players have a full bench, they both discard two bench Pokemon. And again, the word annoying is absolutely apt here. This, I mean, one of the most annoying things for me about this is I adore the Excadrill from Cosmic Eclipse. But a good attack on Excadrill for one fighting energy does 180 damage if you've got three or fewer cards remaining in your deck. So you instantly lose to a Balalba and Bryson Man. Any deck that is trying to survive on a low deck size is ruined by this. But there are plenty of times you'll just play a random Balalba and Bryson Man and then you'll hit something important and your opponent won't be able to set up and they'll lose the game. Or you'll play a deck that can reuse it and then you're in trouble. Yes, it discards your own deck as much as your opponent's, but the thing to remember is that you're playing the card, you're prepared, you're ready for it. And in theory, your opponent won't be. It's, yeah. I know I keep saying the word annoying, but I, I do think that is the right word for it. In at number three, we've got Reset Stamp, a card I've already mentioned. It is an item card that makes your opponent shuffle their hand into their deck and draw a number of cards equal to their remaining prizes. And there is a reason it is played as a one or two of in essentially every deck right now. And the reason is you can win the game with this card. You can reset stamp your opponent down to a one or two card hand, knock out their only real attacker, and if they don't draw into something quickly, they lose. Simple as that. That's what this does. It makes your opponent not have any options. It makes your opponent go, well, yeah, because they just don't have anything. They've got a one card hand that's garbage. You've knocked out their only attacking Pokemon, and then that's it. Simple as that. It's very sad, ladies and gentlemen. It's very sad. And if you've been playing this game lately, you will have seen exactly why this card made the list so high. In at number two, we've got Marnie. Marnie comes in for a very similar reason to Reset Stamp. Marnie makes your opponent and yourself shuffle your hand, put them on the bottom of your deck, and then you draw five cards, your opponent draws four. It's kind of like the old Judge card with two exceptions. You get an extra card, your opponent doesn't. 
and you get to guarantee that your opponent isn't going to draw into what they want. If they've got a good hand and you play a judge, they might draw those cards they need back. If you play a Marnie, they won't because the cards they want are on the bottom of their deck. You can play this not turn one anymore going first, but turn one going second or turn two going first to put your opponent down to a four card hand before they've even set up. And Reset Stamp doesn't do that. Yes, when you get later on into the game, Reset Stamp becomes a better option in terms of pure disruption. But this can be a very early game thing. And that's why it's so good. Not to mention the fact that it's actually a pretty good draw card for you as well. It's one card less than Cynthia. And it's up there with Tate and Liza, which for a while was a very popular actual draw card. That people were playing for draw. Yeah. Um, think, think things get silly with Marnie. Judge was a very good disruptive card. This is just better. But in at number one, it's Oranguru. And my lovely Patreon peeps did not think Oranguru should be at number one. And I tried, ladies and gentlemen. I had a look. I had a good think. I tried not to put it number one. But I do think this is the most annoying card in the format. And here's my reasoning. It's got the attack resource management, which lets you take any free cards from your discard pile and put them on the bottom of your deck. Which means you can reuse Reset Stamp, Crushing Hammer, Pokemon Communication, Lily's Pokedoll, etc. You can reuse any of these annoying cards. In fact, you can reuse all of these cards. This is the best deck with Balauber and Bryson Man, because firstly, you don't deck out. And secondly, because you're constantly putting cards underneath your deck at the end of your turn, so you've always got cards remaining. And secondly, you're dropping this on your opponent over and over and over again until they do deck out. And that's kind of my point here. Any card that you could try and argue is more disruptive than Oranguru, I can counter with, yeah, but Oranguru lets you use that card more often. It is ridiculous. And I do feel comfortable putting it in at number one. Thank you very much to the lovely folks over on the Patreon for the help with this video. Those are awesome people. And if you want to get in on that, make sure you check out the Patreon. But that is my top 10 list. I feel good about it, but I want to know how you feel about it. So let me know in the comments section. Though remember, you can't just put a card down, you've got to put a card up in its place. And you can't just put a card up, you've got to put a card down in its place. If you want to put Latios on the list, you've got to take something off the list. Go nuts in the comment section, but please remember the rule. Be nice, would you? And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wassy, and Twitch for some live action at twitch.tv slash PTCG Radio. If you do want to support the channel, get some bonus podcasts, join in with these kind of list making things in the future, then head on over to patreon.com slash PTCG Radio, where you can do exactly that. And please do make sure you're checking out youtube.com slash plays, where you can find out about a whole bunch of games that don't have Pokemon in, but are pretty gosh darn awesome nonetheless. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching PTCG Radio.